wonder what your daily math block should look like? An effective math block incorporates whole group and small group instruction. It also provides time for teaching new skills, practicing for mastery, and reviewing previously taught skills. However, there are two things you need to keep in mind, the ideal and reality. In today's episode, I'm gonna share some tips and strategies for scheduling your math block. Stay tuned. What's kicking educational rock stars? Welcome back to another episode of Teaching Made Easy. I'm Farah, the Center Fairy, your ultimate source into the wonderful world of simple classroom systems that actually work so that you can finally get back to what you love teaching. If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, be sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and click that bell so that you get notified when I go live or upload a new video here on the channel. Now, math blocks can vary from grade level to grade level and quite frankly, from school to school. First, I believe an ideal math block is 75 minutes or longer. I really wish that was the norm to give as much time to math as we give to literacy. But the real situation often requires teachers to cram all the learning into 45 to 60 minutes for math. I'm going to start with the ideal, a 75 minute block. There are a few key components of my math block that I've been using for years that are the most successful in making sure my students get the instruction they need. The first part is the warm up. This part of your math block will be about five minutes and serves one of two purposes, reviewing math skills and introducing new topics. Any good lesson starts out with an engaging warm up, and math is no exception to this rule. This part of your math block should be fast paced. This is great for a quick review or a way to interest your kids in a brand new topic. Remember, you want to spend the bulk of your time in small groups and centers so that you really focus on the students' individual needs. Here are some examples of things that you can do during your warm up calendar activities, number sense activities number of the day. You can even use one of our math centers as a warm-up activity. You can project it up on the board and use the digital version whole group to introduce a new skill, review a skill, or introduce the type of center game that it is so that when they see it in their centers they'll know how to play. After your students are good and warmed up it's time to move to that direct instruction. This is the part of your daily math block when you are explicitly teaching a math concept. You're teaching and modeling new concepts by using think alouds and clear visual models. It'll be about 20 minutes of your block. This time is also great for some guided practice. You can use it for your students to actually practice the skill that you taught during a mini lesson the day before. It's important to be strategic with this time and stay focused on the topic. If not, you could run long and find yourself with less time for small group instruction. During your whole group instruction time, you could do math read alouds, hands-on activities with manipulatives, or even use a center activity to practice with a partner. I love to use this time to introduce those new center games and manipulatives as well. By using one day to explicitly teach the concept and then the next to do some guided practice, you're going to find that you're able to get a lot done during this 20 minute block of time. Now, now that you've taught your mini lesson, it's time for small group instruction. This part of your math block will be the longest and will be about 45 minutes. There are a few things that are going on during this time. One, your students are practicing and reviewing math skills in small groups or with learning partners without teacher support because you are going to be focused on your small group. Students will rotate through a series of centers that are at their independent learning level. Remember, centers are for review, so don't include content that your students don't know or skills that you're teaching that week. When you do this, your kids become frustrated and they're going to be off task, often interrupting you at your teacher table. This is why we create our math centers with predictable game styles that students get comfortable with and only the skill changes. You can check them out in our shop for grades K through 5. We'll leave a link in the description. Now, the small group instruction part. I make sure that I'm one of the centers that students rotate through. I group my students so that there are four to five groups of no more than six students. For more about how I group my students, check out my video I did a few weeks ago. I'll link it up in the cards and in the description. As students rotate through centers, each group gets a chance to come to my table. This means that I get to meet with each student every day. I will work with each group on targeted instruction to meet the needs of those students. This is a very magical time because it allows me to see and correct math misconceptions and see them up close and watch them grow in their math skills. Now that small groups are finished and centers are cleaned up and put away, your students need to reflect on what they've learned. This last five minute block is a great time to use an exit ticket, oral math talk, or another quick closing activity to allow your students to show what they know. Now I get it, not every teacher is going to have 75 minutes or more for their math block. The reality is that most are gonna have 45 to 60. So what do you do if you have less time? 
If you have a 60 minute math block, it may look like this. You might have five minutes for a warm up, 20 minutes for a mini lesson, 30 minutes for small groups and centers using only three groups, and five minutes for a wrap up. If you only have 45 minutes, you could eliminate the mini lesson and the wrap up, meaning that you would have to do more of the teaching inside your small groups. I would do a five minute warm up and 40 minutes small group. This would be three groups that I could meet with for about 20 minutes each. It would mean more than my desired set six students or less in groups, but with math, it's easier to do this. Now I realize that every classroom schedule is gonna be a bit different, but one of these schedules should help you get your block organized and scheduled. Now, if you're looking to get your centers organized, you can check out my free guide, Three Steps to Organizing Your Math and Literacy Centers by clicking the link in the description. This is also gonna get you on the wait list for the next time I open up enrollment for Learning Centers Made Easy, the masterclass and the membership. And I will be sharing some great tips and resources for your math and literacy centers right into your inbox. Now, are you looking for activities to use inside your math centers that are going to help eliminate the interruptions at your small group table? Be sure and check out our K-5 math centers inside our shop. We'll leave the links to those in the description as well. Now, if you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back into your classroom to make your teacher life easier, check out the videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.